Let me first uh, thank very much the governor of Kano State for very kindly hosting me uh, yet again. I have come, just as I think it was the SSG who mentioned, uh, aside from Lagos State, where I live, and Ogun State, where I'm from, uh, Kano State is possibly the state that I've visited the most in this country. So I think I have the right to claim citizenship of Kano. <laughs> And, I, and so I am at the moment uh, arranging all formalities with His Excellency the <laughs> Governor to uh, properly situate myself uh, as a citizen of this uh, great state. Um, I bring you very warm greetings from His Excellency the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, who, as you know, also regards uh, Kano not just as home, but as his strongest uh, political base. And uh, I am happy to say that he is e extremely excited about the developments going on in Kano, uh, some of which I'm here to uh, see and also to commission. Earlier on today, uh, I have been at a few places to commission some of the landmark infrastructural projects that are going on in the state. I uh, earlier commissioned uh, the Alaji uh, Hassan uh, Dantata Bridge, which uh, I'm told is the longest flyover. It's actually the longest flyover in Nigeria at the moment. Uh, 2.5 kilometers of a flyover. Uh, I, I, we note that it's not the longest bridge yet the longest bridge being uh, in Lagos. <laughs> but, but that bridge was built by the federal government. So this is the longest flyover by any state government. 2.5 <laughs> kilometers. Of, uh, and, and this is really excellent. I've also uh, been to see the, uh, I've also commissioned the underpass, the Tijani Hashim uh, underpass, which is also another incredible architectural piece. And I think it's worthy of celebration. We're there physically to see it. And I think that is one of those very important landmarks that will stand out as an infrastructural achievement here in Kano. We also, uh, I also commissioned, sorry, the, laid the foundation stone of the uh, uh, Karibula Nasir uh, Kabara Bridge, uh, which is uh, the one right in front of the um, uh, Muritala Mohammed Hospital. And we hope that uh, that will be completed soon. As a matter of fact, we are told it will be completed in three months from now, you know, and. Every one of the promises that has been made by His Excellency the Governor about completion of projects, I find that he always is very accurate about his timing. So I expect that this will be so. And very shortly we'll be commissioning, uh, as His Excellency has said, the Cancer Center, which I'm told is also an iconic uh, infrastructure in, uh, in Kano. So I think that with all of what we're seeing in Kano State, and it, it, it's fair to say that Kano State stands out as one of those states that is keen into the infrastructural agenda of the federal government. It's, and, it's important, and it's important to point this out because perhaps the most important uh, one of our projects, one of our programs, is infrastructure, is the development of infrastructure. In a few short years, as a matter of fact, in two budget cycles, we've invested almost 2.7 trillion naira on capital alone, which is the highest in the history of the country, just by the fact that we're earning almost 60% less than previous governments. So there is no question at all that for President Muhammad Buhari, infrastructure is key. And of course, you know, uh, 
one of our signature projects is the Lagos Kano Rail, uh, which has gone as far now as Abekuta, and we're hoping that we'll be able to complete that uh, Lagos Kano Rail in the shortest possible time. We expect that uh, the infrastructure projects of the federal government, including the Mambila Hydro Project, uh, the Second Niger Bridge, and several others, will be completed in our own term, in this uh, second term of our administration. We hope that we'll be able to complete as many of them as possible. Infrastructure is key to everything that we intend to do. It's key to resolving most of the major issues that confront our country, especially the economic issues. We need to be able to connect the economic zones of Nigeria. We need to be able to connect the south, the southwest, the southeast, the south-south to the north, and all other areas, all the, the zones of this country have to be connected in order to be able to realize the economic objectives that we set out for ourselves. But I want to say also that uh, the Kano state government has also set the pace in achieving the educational objectives that the federal government under President Buhari has set for us. On June 12th, um, sorry, June 20th, while inaugurating the National Economic Council, the president announced that the federal government would enforce the free and compulsory education for the first nine years of the school life of a child. And almost immediately, uh, we found that uh, Kano State, under the able leadership of, of uh, the governor, launched the free primary education in Kano State. I was, I was here to launch that. I was here specifically to launch that. And to be Mr. President's witness at the launching. Since then, the, the, the governor has also shown that there is a need for us to be innovative and there's a need for us to be focused on education of children. That is the future of our country, is the future of our nation. And I think the governor has done exceedingly well, especially with the integration of the Quranic schools, with ensuring that the Quranic schools also have the benefit of education in maths, in English, and in some of the other important subjects along with Quranic education. I think that that's a very important, uh, is very important strategically for us, very important strategically for us as a country. And I'm very pleased to see that this is going on here in Kano State. The figures about the uh, number of out-of-school children going down is important. It's a very significant development, very significant development, and we cannot and we must not overlook it. Sometimes when we hear about uh, out-of-school children, it is the federal government that is blamed for out-of-school children. But the truth of the matter is that primary education belongs to the states. And they, it is the states that ensure that children go to school. And so I'm extremely pleased to see that uh, the governor of Kano State, again, has blazed the trail and has shown the example, excellent example, of educating our, our very young people. Poverty remains, as, as the governor pointed out, the, one of the major issues that confronts our country. And the president, again on June 12th, uh, 2019, made the declaration that it is the intention of our government to take 10 million people every year out of poverty in the next decade, such that in the next 10 years would have taken a minimum of 100, people, 100 million people out of poverty. Now, that may sound ambitious, but I must say to you that we are extremely committed to that, and we're extremely focused. This explains why it is that we launched the social investment program. I'm sure that most of us are familiar with the social investment program. Every country the size of Nigeria, any country of our size that does not have a social investment program or establish a social safety net for its people will be acting irresponsibly. And that's the reason why we launched our social investment program. Under that social investment program, today we're feeding 9.5 million children every single day as part of our homegrown school feeding. 
That, of course, has a multiply effect for agriculture, has a multiply effect for those who cook the food and others who are connected one way or the other, aside from the children who are benefiting from it. We've also given out loans in excess of two million, uh, two, in excess of two million individuals, petty traders, under uh, government enterprises, uh, a government enterprise and empowerment scheme, JEEP. So that's the trader money or market money. We've given out over two million separate loans. This is being done by the Bank of Industry. We've also given conditional cash transfers to the poorest of the poor. This is assisted by the World Bank. And we're now reaching about a million such people. Aside from that, we engage 500,000, in fact, it's 520,000 young people under our NPAR program. So that in every local government of Nigeria, we have, an M we have NPAR beneficiaries in every local government. And these individuals, these young men and women, serve all across the country. They serve in the schools. Some of them are extension workers in the farms, etc. This social investment program is only at its beginning. It is, it is, it, we are not able to do as much as we want to do now, but we must ramp it up, and we are doing so. We cannot have a situation where so many in our country are poor, and this is one of the major concerns of Mr. President, that we must take as many people out of poverty as possible. That's why we, gave out, we started giving out the loans to uh, the petty traders, the loans to farmers, under our anchor borrowers program, almost a million farmers have now benefited. And we intend in this next cycle to give even more farmers so that we're able to create, an, we're able to create another economy around agriculture, a major economy around agriculture, and the entire agricultural value chain. So it's important for us that Nigerians are taken out of poverty. And I'm really pleased to find that Again, uh, the government of Kano State has always keyed into the social investment programs and also does several of its own empowerment programs for many of our people who require uh, the assistance of government at this level. I'd like to say again that um, Kano State remains the, one of the very best examples of what is going on. But in particular, I want to commend you for the peace that uh, has reigned in Kano State. Uh, very, it's, it's very important that uh, we see and that we experience peace. And I'm glad to see that you have also been able to deal with all of the issues that we find here and there, banditry, uh, kidnapping, etc. The federal government, as you know, is again committed to ensuring that there is peace and security in Nigeria. And one of the ways is by, the, uh, is by our community policing strategies. We expect that when the community policing strategy is fully rolled out, we will be able, we'll be able to experience even greater peace in our country. Because really, policing must be local. It's the most, it's the most fundamental uh, uh, attribute of policing, that it is local. So that local people, uh, local uh, individuals, are able to see to the security of their own uh, localities, their villages, and, and their homesteads. So again, I want to thank you, uh, Your Excellency, very much for your warm uh, hospitality, and to thank you all very much for uh, making the time to come, and to say that uh, we believe very strongly that this, uh, that this state will continue to do even better and better and that there will be greater progress for this state and greater progress for our country. Thank you very much.